Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 10 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, we'll talk about quantization, specifically MIDI quantization. And I'll also show you all of the main quantization controls in Logic Pro. Quantization or quantizing refers to the timing correction of MIDI notes on the grid. So if you play a note or notes a little before or a little bit behind the grid line, you can quantize those notes directly to the grid line. But Logic's quantization parameters have additional controls, like being able to vary the strength of the quantization. Maybe you want to tighten up the timing of a MIDI recording, but you don't want it to be perfectly quantized to the grid. You can also apply swing to MIDI recordings, even if the original recording was not a swung recording. Before we jump into the tutorial, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is awesome for file storage, sharing, and collaboration for musicians and producers, but let's talk about Boombox's new artist page feature. This allows you to create your own custom artist page that can be shared with the world. I've already built an artist page here for my own electronic project, Electrocosm. So for this video, let me do another one for my wife's band, Foxy. Okay, so I'll just change the display name to her band name. You can create your own custom handle, so I'll go ahead and do that as well. For the photo, I'll add a band photo of all of them. And for the header image, I'm going to swap out this old logo with one of their new logos. I'll upload their most recent tracks. And then you can add any other information you like, like a bio, link to your website or YouTube channel in this case. And then you can publish your profile. And now the band has its own custom page to share new music and collaborate with others. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io and get four gigabytes of free storage space. And right now they're offering 40% off your first 12 months of any plan. Okay, so I've got a Logic project here with just some loose musical ideas. All of these I played in with my MIDI controller and I have not quantized them or edited them at all. We've just got chords, a beat, a bass, and a melody. Let's start with the chords. And I'm gonna double click on this to open it up in the Piano Roll Editor. And you'll see that the chords are indeed a little bit rushed. They're a little bit ahead of the bar line. Now, one thing I wanna talk about here before we even get into quantization is if I set the playhead right here at bar two and press play, you hear nothing. Why is that? Well, it's because your playhead is coming in after the note on message for those notes. If I set the playhead here, before the front end of the note, then they play just fine. So if you're working with MIDI recordings where you have things slightly in front of the grid lines, in front of the bar lines, and you don't want this to happen, you can actually turn on something called MIDI Chase. So to do this, you're gonna go up to File, Project Settings, and then MIDI, and then you're gonna go to Chase, and then from here, you're gonna turn on Notes, and I also like to include no transpose instruments as well. And so what this does is now if I set the playhead here at bar two, even though it's after the note on message for these notes, it's still gonna play. It doesn't matter where you uh, put the playhead in a MIDI chord or a MIDI note, it's going to still play that note. So that's MIDI chase. I just wanted to show you how to do that because it's one of these essential features that is turned off by default. And unfortunately, it is a, a project setting. So these have to be set up on a project by project basis. So if you want to turn on Chase, you're going to have to turn it on in every project where you want to use it. OK, so let's start with the chords and let's quantize these chords. In the Piano Roll Editor, you will see a time quantize menu over here. This is where you can select your quantization value. Now, the value you choose is not necessarily uh, tied to the length of the notes. Now, these are all obviously like whole notes and double whole notes. A whole note is a note that lasts one full bar in length. So this is two bars in length. This is one bar in length. This is one bar in length. And then this note is two bars in length. But if I had these notes, say, over here, and I wanted them to come in here, I couldn't use a whole note as my quantization value because the note is not coming in on the bar line. So whole note quantization is going to be used 
when your notes are coming in on bar lines like this. So the value for that is one, one. And you'll see there's a bunch of different values in here. We're gonna go through most of these, but not all of them because some of them are just not used very often. But if you select one, one note as your quantization value, and then you drag over the notes and you either hit the Q button here or press Q on your keyboard, you'll see that it quantizes all of those notes to the nearest whole note. Now, if you want to dequantize notes, you can do that too. Just select the notes again. You can come up here to functions and select dequantize, or you can use the key command option command Q. But what you'll see is this puts the time quantize value on off. So again, you're gonna wanna select one one, drag over these and hit Q to requantize them. Now, one of the things that's really important about uh, understanding quantization in logic is that, and this is an issue that a lot of beginners get confused about, is that the time quantization value you see here in the piano roll editor is not tied to the MIDI region you have selected. The quantization value you choose is on a note by note basis. So this means that each note can actually carry its own quantization value. So for example, if I had this note coming in out here and I wanted to quantize this to a one one or whole note, I could do that but then this is half of a whole note. This is a half note. So I could drag over this and I could quantize it to a half note separately. And it's gonna push the uh, front of that note exactly to the half note, exactly to the third quarter note of that bar. The time quantize menu will not change as you select different notes. If you want to undo your quantization, you're gonna have to select those notes and press Option Command Q or you can just press Command Z to quickly undo. So again, these values over here are not region values. You're simply selecting a value and then applying the quantization to the selected notes. So I'm gonna press E to close the piano roll editor, and let's click on this and press Command R to repeat it one time. In fact, let's repeat it another, another time. And then let's uh, mute the bass and melody for now, and let's just focus on the drums up here, let's open that up. And you can see we've got a, a much more complex pattern here. So when we look at this, we have to, again, determine what the proper quantization value for these notes is going to be. Sometimes it can be the same value for everything in the pattern, other times it won't. In this pattern, you can see that for the most part, everything is snapping to a 16th note. So if I come up here to my LCD display, go to custom, you can see that my grid value is 16th note by default. That's the default in logic. So each one of these grid lines is a 16th note. Other than these three notes right here, the rest of the notes can be quantized to a 16th note. So what I can do is I can drag over these and then go to time quantize and select 16th note. Now, when you select the notes first and then choose the value in the menu, it will automatically apply the quantization value. But if I already have a 16th note selected, I can drag over these notes and press Q to quantize them little by little. Or again, I can sort of zoom out here and then drag over everything and hit Q to quantize those. Now, everything here has been quantized to a 16th note. Technically, the hi-hats here are eighth notes because they're not on every single note. And that's normal. Sometimes you'll find that you can use a smaller quantization value for larger values. It just, again, depends on where that note falls on the grid. So let's come over here, and this is like a triplet. This is three notes uh, fit into the space of two 16th notes. So this means this is a 16th note triplet. So if I select the 16th triplet value, drag over these and hit Q, you'll see that it quantizes these to a 16th note triplet grid. And you can verify this by changing the grid to a 16th note triplet if we come back there, you'll see that all three of those notes are directly on a grid line. Let's go back to 16th notes, and let's give this beat a listen.
And by the way, if I haven't mentioned this already, all of your Zoom controls will work down in the Piano Roll Editor as well. You have a separate set of uh, snap uh, to grid modes. Remember, if you turn this option on and drag over notes, you're going to hear them. If you deselect it, you can select notes without hearing them. And if you don't want to have to continuously scroll like I was doing there during playback, you can just turn on this option, which is follow playhead. So you'll see the page automatically scrolls. And if you click on the background and hit Z, it'll automatically zoom everything in that region to fit the piano roll editor, just like it works up here in the tracks area. Okay, so I've got the drums quantized there. Let's go down to the bass here. Okay, so it's whole note, whole note, whole note, and then two half notes. So this is what I was saying before. Sometimes you can use smaller values for larger values. It's just de dependent on where they're positioned. Like if this note was here and this note was here, well, I'm gonna have to use a quarter note for these because these are not on whole notes or half notes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna quantize everything to a half note and everything should snap to the nearest half note. So if you have MIDI recordings where there's like overlaps like this, note overlaps, or you've got gaps in between the notes, let me show you a quick trick to sort of uh, get rid of overlaps and also fill these gaps. If you select the notes and then press backslash, that will get rid of any note overlaps. If you then press shift backslash, that will fill the gaps. Uh, essentially, it'll make the, the back end of a note adjacent to the next note. This is typically called force legato. And if you forget those key commands, you can go up to edit, go down to trim, and you'll see backslash here and shift backslash here. And remember, when you adjust the velocity of notes, you can hold option, and this will set all of the velocities to the same value. Okay, let's go to the melody. Let's open this up. And this is probably going to be all 16th notes. Yeah, because I'm playing just straight 16th notes for this. So I'll hit Command A to select all. Let's quantize to a 16th note. And there we go. So let's loop these out. And let's see what that all sounds like. What I'm going to do here at this point is I'm going to drag over these. And I'm going to hit J, and that will join together those MIDI regions. And let's talk a little bit about the strength parameter here. So the strength parameter, what it's going to do is it's going to vary uh, the amount of quantization you have. So at 100%, all of the notes are going to snap to whatever the quantization value is. If I pull this back, you'll see the notes sort of drift away from their intended target. So this is a great way to keep your MIDI recordings sounding more human, or just to add a little bit of variety and variation to your MIDI recordings. Now let's check over here where that triplet was. Yeah, see, because I had 16th note selected and I was messing with the strength slider, each time I move the slider, it's requantizing the notes. So those triplets kind of got off. So let's go ahead, we'll keep this on strength 85, but let's requantize this to a 16th note triplet, just like so. And then I could do the same thing for the melody. Maybe I'll take these, choose 16th note. We'll pull back the strength a little bit just so that everything isn't so perfectly on the grid. It just gives it a little bit of variation. Okay, let's pull the melody up here by the drums. I'm gonna drag over both of these regions and double click, and what that'll actually do is it'll show both of them in the piano roll editor. I'm gonna hit Command A to select all, and I'm going to dequantize everything. Because what I wanna show you now is I wanna show you the swing function. So what the swing function does is it allows you to take notes that were played in a straight way, meaning like straight 16ths or straight eighth notes, and you can give them a little bit of swing. 
So if I select all of these again and quantize to a 16th note, again, everything's just going to go straight to the grid. Let's pull the strength up to 100%. What I can do is I can drag this swing slider. Its default position is 50, which means basically no swing. If I pull this to the right, you'll see every other 16th note sort of moves to the right. And if I pull to the left, it's going to give you like reverse swing. So what this can do is it just adds to the groove of the uh, of the MIDI recording. It just gives it a little bit of a swung sound, which is something that musicians normally do sometimes. But, you know, there are plenty of situations where you would not want swing, and there's plenty of situations where you would want swing. So it's really up to you as the composer. Are you looking for a swung sound or a straight feel sound? Now, the reason why I don't have to swing the bass and chords is just because they're all long notes. Typically, the swung notes are going to be 16th notes or uh, eighth notes. So even the kicks you can see are swinging and then the melody is swinging as well. Now, unfortunately, I think that triplet is just going to get yeah, the triplet's going to get messed up, so let's dequantize that, Option-Command-Q, and then we'll requantize that with 50% swing, which is no swing, and 16th note triplet. Now, typically when it comes to swing, let's go back and requantize to 16th note. And by the way, you do not need to choose a triplet or a swing value down here in order to use swing. You're gonna quantize to a straight value and then apply swing to those straight recordings. Typically swing values are going to be somewhere between like 58, 59 and like 66, 67. If you use 66, this is like a perfect triplet swing meaning that if I change over to a grid with 16th note triplets, that those notes are right on the grid lines. So, you know, if you're using 66% swing and 16th notes, you could also just use a 16th note triplet and you're essentially going to get the same thing. Well, not exactly the same thing, but it'll be very similar. Um, as you go further than 66, you're getting some really intentional slow swing. And as you pull it further, that's going to give you something that sounds a little more natural. When humans actually perform swing, we rarely play directly on the grid like this. So it's usually a little bit ahead of the grid line, like in the 60 to 64 range. Okay, so that is MIDI quantization in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.